This is the helpful art teacher showing you how to use the image trace feature in Adobe Illustrator. I want to take this picture of my cat bear who's yawning and turn him into a silly, goofy, crazy cartoon character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both the programs of Photoshop and Illustrator in order to accomplish this. First, I'm going to open up my picture of bear in Photoshop and I'm going to start selecting parts of the background and deleting it um, using the quick selection tool until all I'm left with is the image of the cat. Sometimes it helps if you change the contrast on the photo so that the cat and the so that the subject and the background are more uh, uh, easily differentiated. Sometimes you need to go in and clean it up a little bit with an eraser but what I did was I took my layer my uh, background and I changed it into a layer so that I could create a, an image of the cat with absolutely no background whatsoever. Don't forget to click image, image size, and then change it to 300 pixels per square inch so you have a high res image. And then I'm going to do some outlining. I'm gonna outline anywhere where I think detail might get lost. What areas might detail get lost? Well, any place that's white or a very light value has the possibility of getting completely lost in an image trace. Also, anything that's kind of layered, like the mouth is three-dimensional, it might turn out to look like just a black blob. So I'm going to go and trace that, and I'm going to trace the whiskers, the teeth, any of those details. Then I'm going to copy and paste it into uh, Adobe Illustrator. By far the easiest way to do this is to save your file and then open the file in Illustrator. You can open Photoshop files in Illustrator. That's the easiest way. Select all and then object and then image trace. And that gave me a black and white tracing of my cat. This is a vector graphic. So I that means that as big as I make it, it's not going to lose any detail. I'm now going to go select all, edit copy, and I'm going to paste it right back into Photoshop as a smart object. And once it's in Photoshop, if I want to play around with it and manipulate it, I've got to do something called rasterizing. So I'm going to paste it right into Photoshop as a smart object. I'm going to move it around until I have it placed exactly where I want it. And then uh, I'm going to go to the layer menu. I'm going to right click and I'm going to uh, select rasterize. That will give me uh, a pixelated uh, version of this. So now that it's in pixels, uh, I can manipulate it and draw on it, erase things, etc. So I'm now going through and adding detail. I'm drawing with the Wacom tablet. I'm using black and white. So instead of erasing, I'm actually drawing with white where I want to get rid of the black. And I keep toggling back and forth between black and white. I'm using the Wacom drawing tablet to add in any detail. For instance, I seem to have lost a lot of detail on the teeth, so I'm getting that back. And I've decided that instead of him yawning, I just want him to look sort of crazy. So I've decided to give him open eyes. I'm going to play around with that by drawing in the eyes with white and then black. And I'm just going to keep on playing with the detail. I'm, I like, I'd i like to make the stripes on his face a little bit more defined. I don't want him to look as blotchy. So I'm basically drawing in any detail to take this from an image traced photograph into something that's entirely personal in mine. Um, I'm skipping ahead a little bit because I don't want you to get bored while I'm doing this, but you can see I'm doing a lot of drawing and that instead of erasing, which would create holes in the image, I'm instead using white. So uh, the next thing I decided to do was I actually saved it and went back into Adobe Illustrator and reopened it in Adobe Illustrator and image traced it again. And the reason why I did that is so that I would have this nice clean uh, uniform vector graphic. And so now I've rasterized it and I'm going to use the magic wand to select out the white background and get rid of that. Then I decided to select multiple areas with the magic wand and 
do edit fill and 50% gray and then I use the curves tool to adjust the gray to get it to a gray that I like. I then did image adjustments curves and I played around till I got just the correct shade of gray. Now the next thing I want to deal with are the eyes. I'm actually going to use the magic lasso selection tool and select the eyes and then I'm going to hit edit transform scale and I'm going to make the eyes bigger and one of the major principles of animation and cartooning is to exaggerate things so I've sort of exaggerated the expression of his eyes and made him have these really big cartoony crazy cat eyes so I'm playing around with that transforming them and at some point I even hit the warp tool which is edit transform warp and I played around with that to, to get the eyes really big and crazy looking. Uh, now the tool I'm using now is called the Puppet Warp. And the way it works is you, if you want to warp something, you have to drop pins. If you just drop one pin, you'll rotate the whole image. If you just drop two pins, you'll rotate the whole image. If you drop three pins, you can actually take the middle pin and pull it out to warp um, the shape. So it's a fun tool to play around with. And I used it to exaggerate certain parts of the cat and smooth other parts out to change the expression of the mouth, to change the expression of the eyes. So the puppet warp is, is actually a lot of fun to use. Um, it's just in the, in the drop down menu under edit. You know, puppet warp is one of the choices. I'm also using edit transform. And I did edit transform rotate. I'm changing the scale of the neck, the scale of the head, the scale of the body using the Puppet Warp tool. So I'd like you to experiment with that. Really um, create a unique cartoon character from a photograph. So at this point, if you look at it, what I've gotten is a lot farther away from the original cat photograph. I've used the fo original photograph as a reference. I used the image trace as a handy dandy tool, but I'm now uh, selecting an area and warping it to make the body bigger. I'm, I'm changing and exaggerating a lot of things, the mouth, the expressiveness, just to get things the way I want them to look. And remember, you can always click on the history tool and go back to a previous step if you don't like how uh, your experiments are turning out. I'm just going to take a minute now to take a look back at the original photograph of the yawning cat and compare it to the final version of the wacky cartoon that I created. In my next tutorial, I'll show you how to create words and letters along a vector path so you can create an interesting logo or sign using your cartoon.